Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be making like a quick video because I saw that there is a lot of demand for understanding how to set up a TypeScript in React and how to like kind of implement uh, the various different uh, aspects of uh, application in React with ty TypeScript and that's what I'm going to be basically explaining in this video. So as you can see, I have here my VS code, which is my code editor, and I opened in a folder called React with TypeScript and you should do the same. You should open your code editor and open your project over there. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open my terminal and just like any other React application, I'm going to write npx create React app. However, the only different thing is that now you got to write a dot, which is basically saying that you're creating your application inside of the current folder. And at the end, uh, two slash TypeScript. And as you can see, it will create uh, an, a, a React application, which will be built in with the TypeScript module. So as you can see here, now our TypeScript to React application just finished loading. And if we go to our SRC file, you can see that instead of every uh, normal JavaScript file that appears when you create a React application, instead of them being .js, they are now extended by .tsx. And for those who know React, basically every React for file includes some JavaScript and some HTML, kind of, right? So we call that JSX. So the reason why there is a TSX file is basically the same as a JSX file, but with TypeScript. You can see it's literally all the same because we haven't done anything that requires the difference between TypeScript and JavaScript yet. So I'm going to do what I usually do, and I'm going to erase every unnecessary file from a React boilerplate application. So you can see that we have a normal React application right here. Before dealing with more complicated stuff, I want to teach you guys how to basically define a variable using TypeScript. So we have our function here called function. It's the main uh, app file. So the main function when you start a, an, an application in React, we can come up here and define a variable. In this case, I just want to define a variable that is going to be representing my name and I want to display it in the screen. So in normal JavaScript, you could literally just write let or var or const the name of the variable equal to my name, which is Pedro. But in TypeScript, since it is a type defined language, you need to define the type. So name is a string. And if you came over here and basically called name, and you can see that it would work. So for example, if you were doing this for any other type of variable, if we did this for a, a Boolean or a number, for example, I'm going to call this number. We'd have to write here number. If we wanted to call this, and I would have to change this actually to like zero. If we called this uh, Boolean and we wrote here Boolean and change this to true, you can see that it works for every type of object of, of type. So even if we had an object, for example, so object variable, I'm going to call it like this. You can see we can define it as an object. And we can just set it equal to whatever object we want to set it equal to. So like a uh, name, Pedro, and it would work. Now, if you want to see the clear differences between a react application with JavaScript and a react application with TypeScript, you got to start working with more complicated stuff. For example, I'm going to teach you guys how to create states using TypeScript. For example, if we had a simple application in React where we had a state called counter, which had a function called set counter, and it basically represented a number that starts at zero, as you can see by the base case, and it increases by one every time that we click a button. You can see that it would represent by, like this. However, this is in normal JavaScript. You would basically define the state like this and wouldn't actually tell what is that variable. So the type of that variable, the program would know because you defined the base case right here. So zero is a number and it would know it is a number. However, in TypeScript, since it is a typed defined a language, you need to define the, the type before uh, presenting the base case. So over here, you would write number. And this would be how you basically write a state in React with TypeScript. So if you came over here and you press this button, you can see that everything would work. But instead of just not defining the type, you would have to do this every time you define the state. Also, in a case where you had a state which was a string, you could simply create a state like this. You would write the type of the state, so a string, and you could also give it a, a an, an alternative possibility 
that that state would represent. So basically, if you have a string, it could be null. So you would write this, which would basically represent or, and you would say this state can be either a string or it can be null. So in most cases, you can just write null over here, but we're gonna start with a, an empty string. And what we're gonna do in this program to represent is basically we're gonna write something on the input right here, and we're just gonna display it in our screen. So for example, if we had an unchanged property in our input right here, which would basically change the value of our state to whatever we're currently writing in our input, instead of just passing event or E as an argument, we would have to define the type of that variable. So for example, in this case, we would have to define it as react.changeEvent and define it as an HTML input element. This is a special case, for example, whenever you're trying to define a variable as we, we said over here, you would usually write string or ar object or uh, number or whatever. But since we're dealing with an event, we would have to write this over here. And you can see that whenever we write here, all the changes appear in our screen because now our React application knows what we're trying to tell them. Another thing that is really important to understand is how to define functions. So for example, if we had a button called show message, and we had a secret message that whenever we clicked on the button, we basically wanted to call a function that would console log that message into our term, into our console, right? We could simply give an onclick event to our button. And inside of here, we can just call the function. So we would have to create the function up here, const display message. And this function would take an argument which would be a string. So we could, right over here, message, and give it a type, so string. And inside of here, we would console log, the log, the message, that we could simply pass over here whenever we called this function. So I'm gonna pass a lambda function and call the display message function, and simply pass a message like subscribe. You can see that whenever we click on the button now, and we go to our console, the message it is, is displayed in our console. If you're kind of confused to what type you're basically taking in a function or what type is your variable, you can basically set it equal to any, which would basically the, make the function get and receive any type of variable. And this is kind of counterintuitive because if you're using TypeScript, you want to be strict with yourself. You wanna be making functions that only accept the exact type of variable that you want to. However, if you find yourself in a case where you really don't know what you're expecting, or if you find a case where you can't find any answer online, for example, on what type you should be defining, you can use any and it will work as you can see right here. I'm saving it and I'm going to my console and it's still displaying my message. A final quick, really important thing on using TypeScript in React is the ability to pass props with the correct types. So for example, I created a folder called components right here, and I created a file called my message. And in order to pass props from a, a, parent, comp from a parent component to a child, you will have to do the following. You would have to create an interface called props and or whatever you wanna name it. And instead of it, you can simply define all the different variables you wanna pass and their types. So for example, in this case, I created a variable called message and I defined it as a string. However, as you can see, I put a question mark in front of it. This basically means that you can call this function or this component, and you don't actually have to define that property. However, if I remove this, for example, and you can see in our app.tsx, I already imported my message, and I'm not currently defining this property. When I save this, you can see that now it gives me an error because now that property needs to be defined whenever you call this, this component. If I leave it like this, the error goes away. So this is how you create a prop. And if you go to your function, so my message, you can see that inside of it, we create kind of like a, you put it inside of two curly braces and you write the name of the variable, so message, and you set it equal to the name of the interface you created, so props. And inside of here, you can literally call it. For example, if I, if I created another one called number and I set it equal to a, a, a number, let me actually give it another name, age, so my age and I set it equal to number, I could simply come here and write age, and you would already know that it would take an age because it's calling from the props interface. So if I came here and we also displayed an age variable, you can see that when I save this, 
it gives me an error again because I didn't said I didn't say that age could actually be empty. So if you come here and let's pass a message. So let's pass a message that basically says, "What's up? Who even codes in PHP?" And we also pass my age, for example. So um, 19. Oh, sorry. I need to pass it as a inside of a curly braces. So if I pass this, you can see that now it displays everything. So it passed it, it displays the message and my age and it, it is all working. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to make it quick because the introduction to how to use TypeScript in react is very simple. You will encounter more complicated subjects and topics whenever you start working with TypeScript, but I would definitely recommend if you are in in a intermediate to higher level position, you want to get a job. TypeScript is definitely the way to go. I'm going to be definitely making more be making more videos because every project I make, I actually use TypeScript. Despite making several videos using JavaScript, like in my personal projects, I always use TypeScript because of how efficient it is, because of reasons exactly about like this, where I can define the type of this, the, the variable, and I can be sure that that function or that component will be receiving a value that respects the type it needs to be. Also subscribe if you want to see more videos, because I love making these videos. I love making videos about topics and technologies that are really in demand in the industry. And I'm just trying to make whatever I used to think that I wanted to see on YouTube and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm just trying to make different videos that you guys will enjoy. So if you enjoyed this video, please comment down below and subscribe and I see you guys next time.